I hope everybody's doing well. I'm assuming many of you are aware that at our regularly scheduled governing board meeting last night, our governing board made some very difficult decisions that were designed to better prepare us tomorrow to do the good things that we're always doing for the, our, the children that we work for. Um, but those of you who aren't aware, um, our governing board last night made some decisions that, that not only impact our ability to go ahead and start generating contracts so we can get prepared for next school year, but also some very significant decisions that were designed uh, to help protect people and programs. Our governing board last night voted to uh, move to a four-day work week beginning next school year with Friday being the off day and also voted to close Superstition Mountain Elementary School. I first would like to compliment um, the faculty and staff at Superstition Mountain Elementary School. You all have worked incredibly hard. I had an individual ask me recently um, if the closure of SMEZ was due to something that SMEZ did wrong. And I want to say again, and I've said it time and time before, but I want to say it again. Uh, I could not be more proud of the work that has been done at Superstition Mountain Elementary School. And nothing that anybody on that campus did had anything to do with the decision that was made. I've said this time and time again that, you know, a budget deficit of $2.7 million, that's a big number. And on paper, it's easy to solve it because it's just numbers. But having decisions that allow us to not only solve that budget issue, but also prepare us to protect people and programs, that's where it gets tough. And the closure of one of our elementary campuses was, was truly and is truly a part of that financial equation. And, and my compliments to SMEZ for all the work that you've done. And please don't ever let anybody insinuate or, or make you feel like the closure of SMEZ had anything to do with what you have done on that campus. I couldn't be prouder. Our governing board um, made some very difficult decisions. And, and again, when faced with the challenges, I, I compliment them for making decisions that allow us to once again focus on what makes us great. Um, you know, the buildings, the five days, the four days, that isn't what makes us great. What makes us great are the employees that we are the employees that we have that every single day come to work to better the lives of our children. Whether you're the bus driver in the morning, the cafeteria worker, the teacher, the principal, every one of us have an opportunity every single day to touch the life of a child and being able to employ individuals that are of high caliber and quality is critically important. And so by moving to a four-day work week, our governing board not only closed that budget deficit, but also allowed us to provide an incentive to our current employees, but even prospective employees, to, to be a part of our family, to be a part of the AJUSD family. By closing a campus, our governing board um, shaved off about $460,000 of that $2.7 million. And so again, the idea of, of, of recognizing what makes us great and making decisions to protect what makes us great is very much appreciated. With that, though, I believe as an employee, I have, have some responsibility. Our governing board made those difficult decisions to, to position us to be better. As an employee now, it's my responsibility to take that lead and continue to do what I do so well, not only this year, but as we move into next year. When we look at the four-day work week and we realize that we're going to have longer days, longer class periods, we have to maximize that time. We're, there was a period in our district in which we spent a lot of time talking about bell-to-bell -bell instruction. And, and over the course of time, we, we haven't necessarily focused on making sure that that's an understood expectation. But it absolutely is. We cannot waste a minute of time, not only this year, but next year. As a district, we spent years discussing differentiated instruction, small groups, large groups, as a way to meet the needs of, of all of our learners. As our class sizes will go up, the understanding and implementation of differentiated instruction becomes even more critically important. We know the foundation and the framework of Beyond Textbooks gets us pointing our arrows all in the same direction, which is fantastic. But as we finish this year and we start rolling into next year with a different structure in place, making sure our arrows are all pointing in the same direction is critically important. I know one of the concerns that was, was um, communicated a number of times about the closure of SMES was what would we do with the, our preschool program and our, our, and our specialized special needs program on that campus. As was communicated last night, the recommendation by the governing board and the approval by the governing board is to move our preschool program that is currently at SMES onto the transitional learning community, which is housed at the southeast side of the high school campus. We chose that location because of the proximity to the current location, meaning um, the concern of, of trans 
transporting some of our preschool students a much longer distance or the, the proximity to healthcare. The high school campus is, is a mile from SMES, and so we alleviated the transportation issue by moving the preschool program to the transitional learning community. And we also will take our, our self-contained SPEAR programs that are currently housed at SMES and transfer those over to Desert Vista Elementary School for the same reasons in terms of, of transportation and closeness to, to healthcare facilities. I compliment uh, our governing board for the difficult decisions they've had to make, and I appreciate the input and the participation that all of you have had in this process. Uh, we're not done yet. Um, last night's decisions got us about 85% of the way to the $2.7 million. Um, we're looking for other financial solutions that will have much less of a significant impact than the decisions that were made last night, but we still have some work to do. The $2.7 million budget deficit that we've been working to solve does not take into consideration the current uh, budget proposal by our governor. As I'm sure many of you are aware that the current budget proposal is would uh, necessitate an additional $600,000 reduction to Apache Junction Unified School District. So even though we've been solving a $2.7 million issue, that issue may become $3.3 million depending upon what our legislature decides. I would encourage you to stay active in voicing your belief about the importance of education in our state, um, not just as it relates to the situation we're facing right now, but just in general. Uh, we know that in order for us to do the business that we have to do, we can't do it on the cheap. And our state continues to fund us at a rate that's less than any other state in the country. And every single year we get back to this time and we're told we need to do it with less. Um, I believe it's important that, that we as, as advocates of education make it clear that supporting schools, supporting our children should be a priority um, at the local level and at the state level. I, if you have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. And again, I want to thank the governing board and all of you who have taken the time to participate and would encourage you to continue to participate as we move forward. Thanks.